Hey guys, this is a video in my MATLAB tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to plot in MATLAB. We'll start with the basics of plotting polynomials and trigonometric functions. We'll also talk about the dot operator that comes into play when doing elementwise operations from vectors. Then we'll discuss how you can customize line styles, colors, add axis labels, a title, and so on. We'll also discuss how to plot multiple functions in one figure. Then we'll look at how to graph derivatives and integrals directly. Without further ado, let's get to it. Let's say I want to plot the function y equals x squared. We know what that is supposed to look like. It's a parabola. You might be inclined to start by defining the symbolic variable s, y, m, s, x, and then say y equals uh, x squared, and then say figure plot x comma y. However, when you run the uh, when you run the script, you'll get an error message. It says here in the error message, data must be numeric. As I have it right now, everything is in terms of variables. When you're graphing on graph paper, for example, you plug in values into your uh, into the function for x in order to find coordinate points. So uh, when doing it on MATLAB, it's very similar. You need to give values for x uh, to plug in. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to create a vector uh, uh, for x values and then use that. Uh, you can create linearly spaced vectors using the colon operator or lint space. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use the colon operator. So let's clear all this CLC. Let's clear this as well. So I'm going to say x equals negative 6. Uh, colon 0 0.5 colon 6. I'm going to suppress that and then say y equals x squared and then say figure plot x comma y. There's also an error with this. Maybe you already spotted it, but when I run this, it should not work. So let's run it. And right here, I get an error message that says incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power. This is where the dot operator comes into play. You see, MATLAB is short for matrix laboratory. It's designed to work with matrices and arrays. If you look at what's going on, right here I say that x is equal to the vector going from negative 6 uh, to 6. Uh, with an increment of 0 0.5. If I click on the variable x here, I can uh, view it. Uh, so the vector actually looks like this. So these are the values in the vector. Let's close this out. Here what I'm saying is I'm taking uh, that vector and raising it to the power. That's not what I want to do. Rather, I want to take the elements in the vector and raise those to the power of 2. In other words, I want to do an element-wise operation. In MATLAB, anytime you want to do a multiplication, division, or exponentiation uh, element-wise, you must precede the caret symbol, the multiplication sign, or the division sign with a dot. So right before the caret symbol, I'll type in a dot. And now when I run this, let's let's clear this out so we don't see all that red. So CLC. So now when I run this, it should work. I should have suppressed this. But anyways, uh, the figure comes up. Uh, and you can see that we get a parabola. MATLAB by default will give you axis values that will work for your function. Let's say that I don't like this blue color and I want to make it red. I can change it. So let's close this out. And also this time I'll suppress this. Uh, let's see, I'll see if we hear clear. Okay. So this time, right after the Y, I'm going to type in a comma and then a single apostrophe. 
and say R for red and then close off the apostrophe and then uh, run it. And now you can see that I get a red line for the parabola. Alternatively, if you type in the color name of any of the available colors, MATLAB should also recognize that. So if you just type in yellow and run it, MATLAB should recognize that as well. So we get uh, uh, yellow here. Let's close this. If you want to see the greater selection of colors, you can simply go to the help feature. So let's click on home and go to help. And in search documentation, type in something like plot color, press enter. And uh, the top result is 2D line plots. So we're going to click that. So if you scroll down a little bit, there, there we go. So if you scroll down, you see that there, there is a table with uh, the letter for the color and which color it represents. So these are the available colors ranging from yellow to black and these are the uh, letters they're represented by. So black is represented by K, white is by W and so on. And right above it you'll notice that uh, there are markers. So if you didn't want a solid line you could replace that with an asterisk, plus signs, circles, triangles and so on. So let's close this out. Now let's say you didn't like the solid line and wanted to replace that with a green dashed line. So, so let's say we're going to replace that with the green dashed line. So right here where it says yellow, we're going to say G and two dash, uh, dashes to represent dashed line and then just run, run this and you'll see that we get a green dashed parabola. Maybe you want to also increase the thickness of the line. Let's close this. Right after this apo apostrophe, you're going to type in a comma and then uh, apostrophe line width. Close off the apostrophe, comma, and give the value, let's say something like five. Now run it. And you'll see that uh, the, uh, the lines are significantly thicker. Maybe you don't want it this thick so you can play around with the values. Let's just try one of the other symbols and then you can experiment with wider selection of symbols, uh, which would be good practice. So let's, let's do an asterisk. So let's close this out. Uh, let's get rid of uh, this part. So where, where I have the, uh, the two dashes, I'll just have an asterisk and I can run it now. Oh, sorry, I should also get rid of this comma. So I can run it now. So yep, you see that I have green uh, asterisks. So maybe you want to make these asterisks a little bit bigger. So what you would do in that case, since these are markers, you type in marker size. Uh, so you know, let's give it a value of something like 12 uh, and then run it. And you can see that the asterisks are a little bit bigger now. Okay, so let's close this out. Uh, I'm just gonna make it blue. And let's get rid of this for now. Let's say you want to see some grid lines. You can go ahead and type in grid on and that will turn the grids on. So run it. And you can see that I have grid lines now. One thing I notice is I don't have any axis titles or or a title for the overall graph. So I'm going to uh, give some uh, uh, axis labels and a title. So X label parenthesis apostrophe. I'm going to make it very generic. Say X uh, and then units and a parentheses apostrophe and close off the parentheses. Y label uh, parentheses y units apostrophe and then closing parentheses uh, parenthesis uh, title 
and let's just call it y versus x. Now if I run it, I have a x-axis label, y-axis label, and I have a title for the graph. Now let's say that uh, I wanted to view multiple graphs in one graphing window. So I'm going to close this. I'll clear all of this out. I don't want to see all that. So I'll create a new uh, independent variable. I'll call it x2. So I'll move this down a little bit. So here I'll say x2 and I'll create a set of values for that. And this time I'm going to use lin space. So lin space, I'm going to go from 0 to 6 pi. Uh, and I'm going to create 37 points. Uh, and I'm going to suppress that with a semicolon. And I'll say y2 is equal to 2 dot times x2 dot times cosine 2 times x2. Within the trip function, uh, you don't need the dot. And also, quick note, MATLAB by default is working uh, in radians. So I'll suppress this as well. Now, uh, right underneath here, I'll say plot x2 comma y2. Uh, and I'll make this, let's say, red and then dashed. Okay. So let's go ahead and run that. So one thing you'll notice is I only have the red dashed lines, meaning I only have my Y2. My Y1 doesn't show up. Following the order of the script, let's close this. Following the order of the script, MATLAB plots this, but the figure is replaced with this plot. If I want MATLAB to retain the preceding plots as it adds new ones in the figure, I can say uh, hold on. So I'm telling MATLAB to retain all uh, the pre uh, previous plots while it adds new one, or in other words, I'm telling it to hold on to its plots. So let's run it now, and you'll see both of them show up. And the axis uh, is uh, set in such a way that it works for both of them. I kind of made these functions up randomly, so I don't really have uh, anything to compare between them. But let's say for some reason you wanted to restrict your viewing window and you wanted to manually choose your uh, X min, Y min, and so on. And you can do that. So I, I will close this. Right under here, I will say axis. And I will create, uh, I'll open a parenthesis. And then I'll create a, a vector. I'll say, uh, I'll give the X min value. So that I'll say that's for this purpose, negative three. I'll say what X max is three. Then give the Y min value, uh, maybe negative 10 and the Y max value. So 10 and then close off the bracket and the parenthesis. And I'll make a comment. So this is axis and then parenthesis bracket x min x max y min y max close off the bracket and the parenthesis so if i run this now you can see that my x-axis goes from negative 3 to positive 3 and my y-axis goes from negative 10 to positive 10. so let's close this Next, let's take a look at how you can directly plot the derivative of a function using the diff command. I have a video in my MATLAB tutorial series that goes over how to differentiate using MATLAB. If you need a refresher on the diff command, please consider checking that out. Since we're going to use the diff command, we need to define our symbolic variable first. So S Y M S X. The function I'm going to plot the derivative of is sine of x. So 
the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. It's something simple, so we know what we're expecting to see in the graph. I'm going to type in fun equals diff of sine of x. Uh, suppress that. Uh, then I'll create an array saying x equals lin space going from 0 to 6 pi. And I'll create maybe 200 points. Uh, then I will say y equals fun of x and say figure plot x comma y. Now there's something wrong with this as well. Uh, maybe you spotted it, but it might be a common error that uh, pops up when trying to do this. So uh, let's let's just run it. And sure enough, I get an error. The reason for that error is that fun right here is just a variable name assigned to this. So fun just simply equals cosine of x. It's not a function. It's not a MATLAB function. But here I'm saying I'm trying to evaluate fun of x. It's simply just equal to an expression. The fix for that is quite simple, actually. Uh, let's clear this. So here, if I want to make this uh, fun equal to a function, I can either use the inline command or the MATLAB function. Uh, I believe the inline command will be removed in a future release of MATLAB. So let's just go ahead and use uh, the MATLAB function. So MATLAB and then F-U-N, uh, capital F, and then uh, function. So parentheses around the whole thing here. And now if I run it, I should be good. And that's... Uh, the graph of cosine as expected. So we'll close this. Uh, actually, let's close it using the command window. So if you have multiple figures open, all you need to do is say close all and all of the figures should be closed. And then see, I'll see if you want to clear this uh, command window. Okay, now I'm also going to go ahead and clear uh, my workspace. Uh, if you wanted to use the inline command, it's going to give you the exact same thing. So, and it's also quite simple. Just switch MATLAB function with inline. And you should get the exact same thing. The last thing we'll look at in this video is how to plot the integral of a function. Let's close this out. I'm going to use the int command for integration. I also have a video on integration in my MATLAB tutorial series. So if you need a refresher, you can always check that out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph the integral of cosine of x. The integral of cosine of x is sine of x, so we know what we're expecting from the graph. Uh, so I'm going to copy this pretty much and paste it in here. And all I'm going to do is change this diff to int, and I'm going to change sine to cosine. So everything else should be good as is. So if I run this now, I get uh, the graph of sine of x, which is what we're expecting. That's it for this video. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. We'll look at more options even with plotting in future videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel, especially the MATLAB tutorial series, as well as the graphing and scientific calculator tutorial series. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care, guys.